<laughs> um, in terms of my background, and it's only relevant to what I'm going to say, really, um, apart from having worked in shipping and transport and other relatively irrelevant things, I also worked in the health service. And uh, I was Unison Brand Secretary, and it was the last time the Tories were in, and very much, to me, that's actually when unions can be at the best. There were 12 unions, and we all worked together in that area. That was in South London, which sadly had a lot to do with since. Uh, you know, where we worked together as 12 unions, trying to really make a difference as those trusts came in. Um, in, in terms of what I'm involved in, and as I say with some relevance, I was going to say, you know, I work, I currently work in a deaf school, uh, which is what's called a non-maintained special school. So it's not linked to any local authority, it's a charity that's very vulnerable there. Uh, it's dependent on the money coming for the children from local authorities, but, you know, is very isolated. And I would say, actually, Again, that those are the kind of organisations that unions are going to have to really think about, about how you work with them, because there are members there, but it's going to be increasingly fragmented after all the provisions, sadly, with what we're facing. I also chair something called Sussex Beacon, which is a specialist HIV care unit, which the inpatient unit is funded by the health service, but again, like the deaf school, it's incredibly vulnerable on funding. Uh, with only four weeks to go for the new financial year, we didn't know whether we would have any funding for our inpatient unit with the current changes. Uh, but we just got through that with a rollover six months funding. We're still left wondering whether I have it in six months. Uh, and also a trustee of a youth club, which is incredibly important to its community, a uh, very deprived community, and has really struggled for practically any funding. And yet everybody who comes to it says it is the most fantastic thing that should exist in every community, but no one wants to fund it. And, you know, to me that's, you know, comes to this whole issue of unions and community. I mean, I have to say, Unions having a profile around any of those organisations would bring them so much kudos with the, with the community. Uh, there are members to be had there, and yes, it's very fragmented bits of membership, uh, but nevertheless, they should be there. But then I think one of the big challenges for unions is getting away from, and I, and I say this as a, having been a union activist, but getting away from sometimes love affair with just confrontation. Uh, and... Uh, you know, actually, how do you work with that employer, really? Because actually, you should be working with that employer, employer uh, to campaign uh, and to save those services. Obviously, I've, I've touched on having been you know, a Labour activist, and one of the, um, it, it seems like almost three quarters of the Labour movement, apparently, like myself, went out to help with the first Obama campaign. Um, it's quite astonishing. But there's some useful lessons there. For me, I had sort of two experiences. One, working with steel workers in Pennsylvania, a very different sort of organisation to anything I was used to, but really interesting how the steel workers in the states were so entrenched in local communities. Uh, and for instance, one of the things they did campaigning-wise was go around with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the local football team, who, who saw the democratic victory as so important that it was a coach tour around small town America with the football players, with the unions, telling people why it was important to vote. And wow, wouldn't I like to see a lot more of that kind of thing going on, really. Uh, but also in some of the, the poorer African-American uh, communities in Cleveland where, you know, people, you know, you talk, touched on voter registration earlier. Gosh, there was somewhere that went from 25% voter registration to 90% <coughs> voter registration. But a lot of that was achieved by working with faith groups, and it's been touched on already. How reluctant people are in the labor movement as a whole to get anywhere near faith groups, and yet they can be the backbone of communities. And yes, they may well hold views that I don't often agree with at times, but actually in terms of community activism, they are so often at the heart of it, and really make a difference in communities that are so isolated. So we really do think we need to get over ourselves sometimes in terms of working with them, much as was said about Women's Institute, for instance. So to take examples around the health service locally, just thinking about how unions have worked here around causes. Quite recently there was a dispute at the hospital when they privatised around catering, a company, very big company, so Dexo came in and it has to be said GMV in particular came in very hard on it, very fast and really built some quite good community support on it and it was quite interesting because in spite of this being a, a city that is I would say centre left but it's as always, we, we fragment ourselves into three parties of the left in the city versus the Tories, and that way they win two out of three seats, even though Labour got the largest vote in the city. Um, so, yeah, goodness sake, folks, unity uh, and working together. Um, gosh, I was from a train of thought there. Uh, what was I talking about? Sedexo. Sedexo, yes. 
Um, so, you know, to be honest, that in some ways was traditional trade union activity. Hard, fast, scared the life out of Sodexo in terms of the profile of the dispute. They came running very fast to try and patch it up because they were going to lose contracts in local government and all sorts of other places because of the bad publicity. So that's your, your uh, classic confrontation, back down, win. Now we face um, having a new chief executive of the health trust <coughs> down here who's come down from South London. There's a, there's a wonderful man who came up with the Lewisham closure. Um, <laughs> and his first, first utterances were 30 million, 30 million cuts, plenty more privatisation. Mm -hmm. And what I've been really pleased to see is how much the unions and a lot of community bodies are now coming together and thinking, actually, how do we get in first? It's not wait till he announces the closure of something. How do we show our community support for the health service locally? And although it is quite union-led, it is reaching out quite a bit now. And I think the real challenge, because I'm already seeing it, in, you know, that broad umbrella group is some of the unions are starting to say, yeah, but actually this is just about recruitment or defend our members' jobs, other people having broader vision, uh, and how do you keep everybody working together? Uh, and you've certainly touched on some of those things already about how you can do that. I suppose my third example then would be for the health services, the one I've talked about from a personal point of view, the Sussex Beacon, being voted favourite charity in this city, everything else. You couldn't find something that's closer to most people's hearts. Uh, and yet, where, where is the broader connections with the, with the local groups? It's not going on, to be honest. People are very confused by it because we do receive health service funding, and yet we're trying to charity fundraise, and that always makes very complex people am I just paying because the officers won't pay for it and all that but actually isn't that exactly the kind of place where unions should be because that positive PR is so important and as I say even though I think this is a centre-left city the unions still get a terrible press in this city they are still just the thugs which is obviously so wrong but unless we're prepared to bite the bullet and be far more active in the communities and network far better and yes talk to those faith groups um, I don't think we're going to break some of that down. So actually, we should be getting involved with organisations like that that are so key, do provide vital services. And for once, I said bullet and saying it's not just about self-interest here, it's about that community connection and having credibility. Because there is still, I would say, a large element of union membership for the members that I meet of people doing it sort of reluctantly. It's an insurance policy it's not something I believe in enough. And, and people do want something more to believe in, particularly in times like this. So, you know, I, I would urge that. And I suppose the final example, I would say that is a good example of what goes on. Actually, I touched on it some people here earlier, was yesterday we had the wondrous English Defence League here who come each year because they hate how diverse Brighton is, particularly around, uh, uh, around sexuality and gender, etc. And that truly has for the last few years really become a good unifying campaign and it really does bring people out across the whole centre left spectrum people don't row the fact that you know like myself and the greens we can actually be at the same meeting and not argue <laughs> get on well can't get the tories and the dems involved one day but maybe um but we have the obviously the other spectrum where obviously socialist workers socialist party lots of people who hate people like me but they will sit down to fight fascists with me which is great um so you know we can do it but I, I do think you know today is just so important because if we don't engage uh, in that way how can any of us whether a labor party or a trade unions how, how can we hope to have that credibility and to survive those massive cuts that make it so much harder to get the membership because membership can't be just about the stalls as good as they are at the hospitals mm, and many of us have done those um, it has to be because people actually think, I like that union, it does good things. Uh, and that's got to be such a big part of it. But I appreciate, you know, resources are always tight, but it's that big challenge. Can you rise to that? Can you reach out in that way?